This is the Norris Group's Real Estate Investor Radio Show, the award-winning show dedicated to thought leaders shaping the real estate industry and local experts revealing their insider tips to succeed in an ever-changing real estate market. Hosted by author, investor, and hard money lender, Bruce Norris. The Norris Group proudly presents our 16th annual award-winning event, I Survived Real Estate. Industry experts join Bruce Norris to discuss evolving industry trends, real estate bubbles, inflation, and opportunities emerging for real estate professionals. All proceeds from the event benefit Make-A-Wish and St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We want to thank our platinum partners, Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club, San Diego Creative Investors Association, White Feather Investments, Wilson Investment Properties, Udirect IRA Services, MVT Productions, and Realty 411 Magazine. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for another tremendous turnout and helping us raise over $60,000 this year for two great charities. Thank you. One of our tremendous sponsors is White Feather Investments. It is a company whose sole mission is to help retired veterans how to, they, they teach them how to achieve financial freedom through real estate investment. Um, and I'd like to bring up their CEO, Buddy Rushing, to lead us in uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Face the flag, put your hand on your heart, and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. All right, we have a packed, packed schedule. So without further ado, we're going to get right into it. Here to say a couple words about St. Jude is Erin Eslinger. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, Bruce Norris and the Norris Group. I'm so honored to be here tonight on behalf of St. Jude. So today, one of the most significant indicators of whether a child will survive cancer is where that child lives. Nearly 90% of children with cancer live in low and middle income countries. Many of these kids lack access to accurate diagnoses. It's estimated that 400,000 kids annually worldwide will get cancer, but only half of them will be diagnosed. And of those who are diagnosed in these low income countries, Many of these kids lack access to consistent care, treatment, and medicine. So what that means is that these kids, 80% of them, will die from their disease. That's a staggering statistic, 80%. And it's just not acceptable. CEO Dr. Downing of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital He didn't think that was acceptable either. Something had to be done. And he asked a very simple question. If not St. Jude, then who? So in 2018, St. Jude Global was launched. And the mission of St. Jude Global is to engage over 250 institutions, over 70 countries worldwide. Yes, exactly. And the goal is to increase access to quality care and increase survival rates for childhood cancer and other catastrophic diseases worldwide. The Global Initiative for Childhood Cancer has the goal of increasing survival rates in six common childhood cancers by, to 60% by the year 2030, which is a really ambitious goal. 
But St. Jude, we're no stranger to ambitious goals. Our founder, he had an ambitious goal. And when Danny Thomas set out to build St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, he was told that it was impossible, that it couldn't be done. In fact, he was told that it would break his heart. But he didn't give up, he didn't listen. In 1962, when the hospital opened its doors, a diagnosis for childhood cancer was considered largely incurable, practically a death sentence. But since then, St. Jude has helped push the overall cancer survival rate from 20% to over 80% and up to 94% for certain types of cancer. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. But like I said, that's here in the United States. So our work isn't done. And we won't stop. We won't stop until no child dies from cancer, no matter where they live. If not St. Jude, then who? So it's thanks to fundraisers like these and supporters like you that St. Jude can continue our good work and our life-saving mission, finding cures, saving children everywhere. So thank you. Thank you to the Norris Group for your many years of support for this incredible event and for all the money that you've raised for the kids of St. Jude and their families. Thank you. Thank you. Please welcome Megawish OCNIE CEO, my friend, Gloria Crockett. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank you, Bruce. Wow. Wishes provide what? They provide hope. And I want you guys to know that each and every one of you are providing hope by being here this evening. And I would like to give you guys all a round of applause. So thank you. <laughs> Were those not some amazing wishes? Did you guys see those? Those are amazing. So what people often don't know that those kids that were, um, receive wishes are between the ages of two and a half and 18 years of age. 73%, let me say this, 73% of our kids grow up and have wonderful, happy adult lives. So guess what we're doing? We're being there to lift them up, to provide them hope, to provide them inspiration when their families and them need it most. Just last Saturday, we had our gala, and we granted our 8,000th wish for Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties. <laughs> it takes a community to come together to say, what can we do to help others, to help give back, to help provide that hope? And what we do every single day is providing that. Wish Kids parents say to us, over 92% of them say their child having a wish helped their family grow stronger and clo grow closer together. Also, physicians, 94% of them say that a wish helps kids become more compliant with their treatment. So wishes are important. They're just not a need, uh, a need to have. They're a have to have, right? So we're here today to say thank you all so very much to the Norris Group, to I Survived Real Estate. And I've got a couple of really interesting things. So we wear this gold star because that gold star provides hope. I know, Joey, you've got yours on. Bruce, I've got yours here. So I'm going to pass this over to Joey and give that to you. But I started with Make-A-Wish as the CEO four years ago, just before the pandemic um, uh, took place. And so there was a wish that was adopted by the Norris Group at the I Survived Real Estate event, and that was Elijah's wish. His wish to was, uh, was to meet Jeff Bezos. And I just want you guys to know that Elijah has written a book, and it's amazing. It's an inspiring story of a 17-year-old with, uh, with a very um, tough disease and his mission to cure it. So when he wrote this book, I asked him to sign one for Bruce and one for Joey. It says, Bruce, thank you for supporting Make-A-Wish, and I hope you enjoy my book. I would love to meet you again. So I've got these two for you guys. Thank you. 
when my, when my mission delivery director brought that book, one of the books in, I said, oh my gosh, you have to get them signed. So one of the things that we do each year as well at I Survived Real Estate is we adopt a wish. So what is it when you adopt a wish? You help pay it forward. You actually grant that wish for that child, and then you help that next one be granted. So this is I'm a Wish Kid. This is Abigail. Um, she's five with leukemia, and she wanted to go to Disney World. So I want to say, on behalf of Make-A-Wish, we want to say thank you <laughs> for helping grant Annabelle's wish. Thank you. Again, each and every one of you are helping make wishes come true. I want to say thank you for providing hope and inspiration and have a lovely evening and learn a lot. I learn a lot at this event every single year. So thank you, Joey. Thank you, Bruce. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. In 2013, about five years into the I Survivor Real Estate event, Bruce Norris decided that it should have an award. This award should be a lifetime achievement and mentorship award which honors individuals that elevated real estate investing as a profession with their outstanding leadership and willingness to share their knowledge and work with others. With the blessing of the Jim Rohn family estate, the award was named the Roney Award. The 2023 Roney Award recipient is Aaron Norris. <laughs> Thank you. It falls on me to tell you all the reasons why Aaron is a great candidate for this prestigious award. So let me tell you about Aaron, the friend, the philanthropist, the investor, and the teacher. First, the friend. To a man and woman, the resonating thought about Aaron was that he made you feel so important that you would characterize him as a friend. A friend who cared more about your success than his own. A friend that could root for you like he had money riding on it. <laughs> a friend who would roll up his sleeves and get dirty or fight right alongside with you. A friend that you couldn't wait to see again and spend more time with. Aaron the Philanthropist. Aaron was the greatest philanthropist I ever knew. Others may have been more pr prolific in terms of giving money, but nobody gave more to more worthy causes than Aaron did, whether it was his time, his treasure, or his talent. And if you were lucky, you got all three. Best of all, he would rally many to join him. His magnetic personality uh, would draw you in, and the next thing you know, you were volunteering for something or writing a check. <laughs> he was a key figure in the Give Big Riverside campaign, which raised over a million dollars for local nonprofits in one day. <clears throat> Aaron, the investor. Now, growing up the child of Bruce Norris didn't actually mean that he would gravitate to real estate investing. You know, he, 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 he pulled up his fair share of, you know, roach-infested carpets and, uh, you know, took his fair share of wheelbarrows to the dumpster, but his heart was always in the arts. He would leave home for the bright lights of New York to fulfill his childhood dream on Broadway. In a twist of fate, he was injured, trying to tumble into play. As he contemplated getting older and how long he could do this, um, he was called home as his mom battled cancer. He never regretted coming home, always thinking of others more than, uh, than himself. After, you know, landing in a couple of jobs, his dad finally said, hey, why don't you come work for me? Aaron said, okay. And he immediately began making a difference. The reports that Bruce had come to be famous for suddenly were different. Aaron had taken over the design and quality of these reports, and it showed. Many would come to say that Aaron brought the Norris Group into the 21st century, and along with it, the real estate investing community. 
Aaron finally bought his first investment home, and he always gave credit to a fellow Roni Award winner, John Schaub, and his book, Building Wealth with one, one House at a Time. For the next decade, Aaron would work tirelessly to carve a niche of his own. He never wanted to be handed anything for free or just be called Bruce's kids, although I know a lot of you guys would like that. <laughs> no, Aaron would dive into real estate technology and marketing, and as quickly as he learned it, he would be on the Investor Circuit Club invest, uh, teaching others how to do the same, which brings me to Aaron the teacher. Aaron's previous career made him a natural in front of the crowd, whether he was talking to a group of 15 real estate agents at a, broker, at a small broker house, or he was presenting in front of 500 people talking about the latest real estate tech, Aaron always brought it. You would never leave like you didn't learn at least one thing that you could immediately implement into your career and to your strategy. Matter of fact, you probably needed a couple days from information overload. And if you didn't get it, Aaron was always a phone call away. You know, I would sit in on a lot of these investor roadmaps that we did, and you know, he loved nothing more than to see the light go out, go off. You know, the light bulb go off in, in somebody's head when they got it. That, that was him, you know, wanting their success more than his, his own. His ideas, you know, he would hit them with what he called, I'm going to beat you up with ideas tailored to your personality and your skill set. As he continued to learn and grow, his ideas would go on to the national stage, writing for Bigger Pockets and Forbes magazine. And if there was a policy change or law that threatened mom and pop investors, Aaron would learn everything he could possibly know so to help you understand what was coming down the pipe from Sacramento. As much as he thought he was an even bigger advocate for the whole real estate uh, community. Let me leave you with the last thought is Aaron's impact. Aaron, through his work with his dad, impacted so many in the investment world. He made the concepts and charts that Bruce would present truly speak to you so clearly that you could make the best decision for you and your family. He also made a big impact on his own. I think you could probably argue who's more famous, Bruce or Aaron. <laughs> I will leave you with this, the impact that Aaron had on my life, if I can get through it. I spent the better parts of nine years volunteering uh, for the same nonprofits that Aaron was helping out, working to make Riverside a better place for everybody who lived and worked there, helping young professionals to s connect socially, develop professionally, and engage civically. But my life would change six years ago when he called and said, hey, me and dad want to make you an offer. What I, what I didn't know is that the trajectory of my life and my family's life would be changed forever. <laughs> I stand here before you as a testament of what Aaron's belief has done. Aaron and I would go to Starbucks every day. I think it was on these short car rides that Aaron truly opened up to me about everything and where we, our bond was solidified. There wasn't anything that we didn't know about each other. It was there that I learned how insecure he was about not bringing value. He hated being thought of being light. The thought of others thinking that he didn't deliver would sometimes keep him up at night. I would tell him that he had nothing to worry about, and he would eventually say, you're right, they ain't ready. <laughs> my family understands this impact, too. My little girl, Chloe's here tonight. She called Aaron her business partner. Because during COVID, she would tag along with Aaron and I to Starbucks, and she would have business meetings with him at 12 years old. <laughs> my son, who graduated high school last year, he was taking senior pictures, and I told him, hey, if you don't want to, you don't have to wear the purple bracelet that we had made when Aaron passed away. He said, Dad, I want to wear it. I know how much he meant to you, and I know how much he did for our family. What I said to him next is what I'll say to all of you. My wish and hope is in your lifetime that you have one just one friend like Aaron. Thank you. Aaron was a beacon of light for our entire industry. And they just don't make them like that anymore. He always made you feel like a priority, no matter how busy he was. Wanted to wish Aaron Norris congratulations on the Roni Award. 
who deserves it more than Aaron? Who could possibly deserve it more? Aaron was one of the best people in the real estate community. He was an amazing human being. He was kind, welcoming, authentic, and humorous. He was also a geek. Aaron was also amazing at using marketing data to highlight upcoming trends in real estate. When I met Aaron, he and Bruce were going through an ordeal with a different builder at the time. And although he was stressed about the situation, I got to see the character of a man that was second to none. I watched him push for, at that time, his clients, you, you all, to make sure that the investors that worked with the Norris Group had access to the best product and the best process possible. I sold Aaron his first rental property, a hoarder house, super smelly, and squatters next door. I was worried he was going to fire me as a friend over that deal. It turned out fantastic. I was relieved. I valued our friendship. Every single time that I spoke with him, I came away feeling completely empowered, completely heard, full of information that could make my life better. Every time he spoke to our group, everyone was just buzzing afterwards. If he wasn't running around at some Norris group event trying to make sure that we all had a perfect evening or that we had all the information we needed or that we had basically some new piece of information that we didn't know about before, he was out in some political endeavor, some nonprofit organization, always doing something bigger than himself. He was just my bestie. We used to have lunch, we had connected years ago, and I was blessed to be able to spend lots of lunches and dinners with him just laughing and solving all the world's problems. And then one day, he voluntold slash uh, convinced me to be on a panel. And he just said, just trust me, you got this. I'm like, I don't, I, I don't even know. So. I go to this conference, I'm sitting in the back trying to hide, and I'm sitting by someone, I've never seen him before, and everyone keeps coming up to him. And then Aaron opens the conference and his poise, articulation, and everyone just in awe of every, hanging on every word that he had to say, and I was like, wow. And then at break, everyone kept coming up to this guy that I was sitting next to, and Aaron comes, I was like, who is this guy? And he was like, that's my dad, that's Bruce Norris. But that moment I realized what a special, human Aaron was not just because of his influence and his knowledge but because of his heart for others and Bruce the same and one of my favorite things to watch was the dynamic between Bruce and Aaron both on stage together Aaron trailblazing the new laws that affect real estate investors and the technology and Bruce of course with the data and analytics it really was cool to see when I think about Aaron I think about the word service uh, always willing to serve um, always thinking about other people I think one of the the first events we ever did together was a breakfast brunch and we didn't know at the time but for an eight o'clock breakfast the Bruce Norris fans would show up by 7 a.m. before the restaurants open and Aaron of course uh, rolled up his sleeves and was uh, going around pouring coffee setting the table serving people um, and that's just one of many examples of Aaron Norris being himself and always thinking about others you know most of us get started in real estate for our own interests but Aaron Norris from the beginning was about bigger things what this award does not address is the extraordinary man you are a spiritual being beyond reproach and most important, my friend. I believe it was Maya Angelou who said, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget the way you made them feel. So these silly masks, there was about a hundred of these with people holding them in front of their face at a commerce event that Aaron held, or he was part of in downtown Riverside. People marching all over the place with these restaurants and businesses. And it was just such a great symbol of how much he was loved and what an influence he was. And this was something that had nothing to do with real estate. This was a, a business commerce event. Dude was amazing. He listened nonstop and he cared about, he cared about our success. He cared about the people around him's success so much. You know, we talk about what Aaron meant to real estate, but real estate's really a business about people. So I would say his biggest impact was just on how he shared his humanity, how he touched people's lives. Um, how he made us as investors want to look at real estate really as a people business. And um, that's just an amazing legacy. I'll never forget that moment. While I was so focused on solving the problem, Aaron, in only a way that Aaron could, reminded me that life itself and our family and friends are worth more than any amount of money or any investment could ever be worth. The very first time that I met Aaron was very special. 
Before that, the Norris Group was all about a handshake. Pat on the back. Well done. When I met Aaron, and we never met each other before that, he came up to me with open arms and gave me a big hug. He called me Uncle Tony. I'll never forget that. What some of you may not know is Aaron's first love, acting. Aaron successfully made it all the way to New York and off Broadway plays. I also want to thank you for inspiring us with your heartfelt and selfless actions, such as leaving your Broadway career to come support your mom, uh, deciding to help out your dad, which took the Norris Group into a new plateau, which has enabled and positively influenced so many people, and also for creating this world-class, amazing I Survived event. Not only has it made such amazing charitable contributions, but it has made all of us in the real estate investment community proud. Thank you, Aaron, for being an awesome person and amazing friend, and congratulations on your award. Definitely no one more deserving than Aaron for the Roni Award. Congratulations, Aaron. Aaron, I want to thank you so much for all of your contributions to our real estate investment community. We've learned so much since you came into our lives. This uh, Roni Award is truly deserved, and nobody else could be stronger in earning it. Your legacy lives on for all the help and service that you've given to others and to the real estate community of Southern California as a whole. Congratulations, Aaron, on receiving the Roni Award. You truly deserve it. Congratulations on the Roni Award, Aaron. Well done. Congratulations on the Roni Award, Aaron. Very well deserved, buddy. Congratulations once again, Aaron. I miss you, friend. Congratulations. So with that said, Aaron, congrats, my friend, on winning the Roni Award. Congratulations on winning this award tonight. Congratulations, Aaron. You certainly deserve this award. And big hug from your Uncle Tony. Aaron may be gone from us physically, but for those of us that knew him, he will absolutely forever live on in our hearts. To accept the Roni Award is that guy, Aaron's dad. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll just say we're retiring the Roni Award, so this will be the last one that we give. The Roney Award was started because of my respect for, for Jim Rohn, 1981, or 1980 in October, I attended a seminar. My first note on the top of the page was, this man doesn't need our money. I could tell his motive was pure, and later on he told, he told a story that changed his life. A Girl Scout came to his door, was a really good salesperson, box of cookies for three bucks, he didn't have three bucks, so what did he do? He, he lied. He said, I already bought 10, book, 10 uh, boxes of them from, a, from another Girl Scout, and when she left, he slumped on the floor and cried, and that event changed his life. And when he taught, I could tell he was trying to reach inside of each person and say, you have one of those stories. You can be something much better than you are. And that's why we, create, we created the, the Roney Award in honor of Jim Rohn, I want to end it with Aaron Norris. One of the things that was delightful as his father is I love to go wherever he had been. When you're raising a kid, your kid's always following where you went, but when he gets older, you get to follow where they go. And one of my joys in life was to go where Aaron had been, and they go, oh, you're Aaron Norris's dad? Oh, we love him. <laughs> There's not a better feeling than that. When Aaron had cancer, he was on a second um, treatment at UCLA. So I dropped him off in front of the hospital, went to park the car, came up, and I passed by the nursing station, and it was literally a buzz, and I, so I paid attention. And you know what they said? Aaron Norris is back. Who gets that at the hospital? <laughs> and every time he went, like, like if they change locations, the nurses at the other location, they're coming over going, this is not where he goes. He was just loved. 
Um, what a lucky dad I have been to uh, follow Aaron and see his reaction or people's reaction to him. So thank you, Joey. I, I love Joey's emotion when it comes to, to Aaron. They, have, they are great friends, the best friends in life. That's so cool to see. So thank you for honoring Aaron tonight. I appreciate that. See isurvivedrealestate.com for event details, information on all our generous sponsors, and to connect with our speakers. We'd also like to thank our gold sponsors, Chase Leland Photography, Fair Trade Real Estate, Inland Valley Association of Realtors, Keystone CPA, Lavis Tax Wealth Management, NorCal RIA, NSDREI, Pasadena Phoebe, Property Radar, The Outspoken Investor, Tony Alvarez, White House Catering, Windermere Tower Realty, Rick and Leanne Rossiter, See isurvivedrealestate.com for event details. For more information on hard money loans and upcoming events with the Norris Group, check out thenorrisgroup.com. For information on passive investing with trust deeds, visit tngtrustdeeds.com. The Norris Group originates and services loans in California and Florida under California DRE License 01219911. Florida Mortgage Lender License 1577, and NMLS License 1623669. For more information on hard money lending, go to thenorrisgroup.com and click the Hard Money tab.